Okay, hello and welcome to, I suppose, the last of uh, the Commander Fodder series for a little while. Well, well, a little or long while, I don't know yet. Um, as I've been threatening for, for a while now, I think, on and off, uh, I want to go back to doing some set musings. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do, and I know it's been requested a few times, is go to some of the um, like the non standard sets so like supplemental sets i suppose is the word i'm looking for there I'm trying to struggle for and um so a good place to start off actually for this is in scryfall has this really nifty feature you can get from the first page so if you go back to the uh, first page here if you go into all sets you can get it to show you by type so you know, all the cube stuff all those different things so um I know it's come up and I'm, I'm going to get there, which is to look at some of the master sets, particularly, you know, going from here, like modern master. So the paper sets, I'm going to skip over um, the remastered ones for the moment. And um, depending on whether people like request those as well, I'll obviously visit those, but I fancy doing masters. But before I do the masters, one thing that, caught my eye and then it's caught my eye on and off is a particular group of starter sets are these portal portal second age and portal three kingdoms just because they were just so unique at the time so that's what i'm going to start off with i'll do the first three episodes i'm going to go through these give them the usual or the most recent um set musing treatment which is to slice and dice them on the curve um, and then look at the cycles, do it that way. So we, it'll be nice. I'll get this sort of emerging feel of the set as we go through them, um, which is a way I'm sort of trying to do it now. And then once we've done that, go into modern and then anything, any other type. Um, I'm sort of, obviously here it's including things like, you know, sets that were sets because they were part of a deck. So you'll see it's, you know, got all the commander product in here, for instance. Now, a lot of these are a set of cards revolving around all the decks that were released rather than specifically a set for um, physical boosters that actually existed. Um, now, there has obviously been commander sets um, that fall into that category where they actually released some boosters. Um, we've also got these other things like draft innovations. Um, so that's where all our conspiracies and our modern horizons and things like that are. And that's another thing I wouldn't mind taking a look at, actually. So, yeah, I'm going to start off with start the, the, those three starter ones, then go into um, like the modern masters type stuff and then go into the draft innovation as a starting point and then just take it from there. See what we end up. Anyway, back to the job in hand. So. Um, as always, um, I've looked up the set on MT, MT Gen and generated six virtual booster packs of, this is Dissension, last set of the um, Ravnica City of Guilds block. And so Anthem of Rakdos was one of the rares. So two black, double red. So whenever a creature you control attacks, it gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn, and Anthem Rakdos deals one damage to you. Has hell bent on it. As long as you have no cards in hand, if a source you control would deal damage to a creature or player, it deals double that damage to creature or player instead. Also in the rares, the six rares, was Rakdos Pit Dragon. So I pulled that in as well. It's got hell bent on it. So another card that benefits from you having no cards in hand gets double strike. Uh, it's 2 and 2 red, 3-3. Three, three. It's one of these dragons which has fire breathing. So single red, you get uh, plus 1, plus 0, and you can invest as much red as you've got into that. But also, flying doesn't get turned on on this particular dragon um, until you invest 2 red, additionally. Uh, Rakdos Pit Dragon gains flying until end of turn. So, yeah. And then this is the... Uh, legendary creature i've elected to go with so something out of this yeah you, know, you know not in the set which is fine um and the important thing is that i pull a rare from the set and then i just decide you know if it's a legendary then i use that or if there's a legendary present i use that and if not i 
you know, just try and pick something that I think is going to synergize um, either something I know or something that I've spotted on EDH Rec. So I spotted that um, Malfagor is used alongside Hellbent cards. Um, so we've gone with that. So it's a 6-6 six, six with flyer, flying uh, for 6. So 2, 2 black, 2 red. And when it comes into play, discard your hand. Each opponent sacrifices a creature for each a card discarded this way. So turns on Hellbent for us, but then also um, gets our opponents to sacrifice creatures for each card in discard. So, um, yeah, obviously we're looking for cards that are going to synergize with the ability on Mel uh, Malfagor are, as a consequence, going to synergize with Hellbent and maybe other cards that have Hellbent on them and any other cards that might uh, synergize with the fact that we're discarding our hand. Now, our main problem is we're going to be burning through our deck like nobody's business um, if we're putting a lot of cards which discard our hand. I mean, I know, um, yeah, and, and just basically <laughs> our hand only. So obviously there may be some uh, reanimation synergies we need to consider or just stuff for getting back creatures on mass from our hand, which um, I'm sure there's a number of candidates we saw in the uh, this week's um, deck musings episode, actually. So uh, let's go in. OK, I'm going to go down this and I'm going to sort of bias this straight away um, by picking certain cards that I happen to know synergize well with the commander. So for instance, Sire of Insanity. So at the beginning of each end step, each player discards his or her hand. So it's each player as well here. So we can also pilfer stuff from maybe our opponent's graveyards. So yeah, we'll have that. So Blood Scrivener, if you would draw a card while you have no cards in hand, instead draw two cards and lose one life. Okay. So, hmm. is that going to work well with Hellbent? This is a question. Do we, I suppose we've got to get some stuff back. Okay, let's just have a look a bit deeper here. Whenever you cycle, discard another card. Okay, yeah, we want that. So I want stuff that's triggering off the discard, really. Uh, Bone Miser. Yeah, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't need it. Yeah. I've got a surly badger. I think I did see what's chainer in here, yeah. Discard a card. You may cast the creatures. Turn, okay. Yeah, let's go with that now. Oh, where are those magus? Let's just go all in and oh, what's that card? Oh, there it is, anger. Is it, what's the, the black equivalent of that? I'm not sure, but we do want that to empty out our opponent's stuff. Just go for these. Oops. Let's get 
If you draw a card while you have no I suppose we should do some removal. Run the charm. Do I want to run a chaos warp? Yes, we're in red. Right. Let's just see what that looks like. <coughs> Let us switch this to something else. Go away. Um, we want stacks, don't we? Mana value, yep. Okay. Right, not too bad. Hmm. suspects <laughs> not sure what my strategy is here apart from just discard stuff <laughs> okay destroy target creature enchantment and opponent controls you lose life equal to the permanent mana cost call to the netherworld return target black creature cover me or Grayer to your hand. Yep, blood scriven also. Let's have Rax muddy. Creature cards in all grave hits. Yeah, that looks like fun. Commander Sphere. Grim. There's reanimate. There's shadow of the grave. Excellent. Leona's caress. No, he did. I should play that. Hmm. It's got a my on it. Good. Okay. Tragic fall. Alright, let's just 
take a look at our land because we've probably got quite a full hand now. Okay, we need to get that down. All right. Thirty-three. So our balance look like that's not far off. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, specifically look for some more land. I think. So we'll chuck in another three land, I think, see how we do. Okay. Or should we run that? Yeah, let's do that. Fun. You're in a myriad. Okay. still. Right, let's dive in. Let's go and have a look for some planeswalkers. Nothing probably. And I must admit, I'm not, I don't know of any, so well, we'll go with that for the moment. can't think if there's any... Um, I suppose some sort of Liliana. Three Leonas.
Okay. What do I want to do next? Just looking for my abilities where I can actually decide if I want to draw draw or not, just to give me a bit extra. You know, do it are there instances where I do want my hand to be empty. for the blood god one list A bit of living death fun. <coughs> right, let's go with some creatures now. What do we got?
So many choices. Okay, so two cards, but we do maybe wanna take that down. So three cards. Each card in hand, and his, and you have in your hand. Each combat fable. A strange deck. Looks a bit of a weird one. Okay. Anyway, so let me export this. And do some test hands. <clears throat> this is not real, I mean, yeah, you can see by the nature of the deck. Difficult to play test beyond just seeing what sort of uh, hands you get. And uh, just doing the draws. Okay, keep this. Right, mountain. Skip 
your discard phase. It says you have no maximum hand size. <coughs> Okay, so yeah, that's good. Let me just get that out. Turn six, okay. Okay, we'll get that. So everybody's going to start discarding now. So that power's going to go up. Okay. Stuff is starting to appear. And then this, where are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so that's castable. Okay. Yep. Not much to see really, but uh, I just want to see that it's. Uh, I'm able to cast stuff. So round one, look at the top. Okay, you can do that. Yep, a couple of calves and a soul ring. <laughs> That's funny. So this would would this be castable? Not quite yet. So we can chaos warp if we want to. We can that's castable. And I can just discard my hand. I might want to wait until strategically good to do that. Let me get that out. Okay. Need extra black, although I could cast that and just then I could get this out. Hmm. 
Oh, I forgot, yeah, of course. Yeah, so at this point, if I cast this, I didn't do it last turn, did last game, did I? I would, I'd have to discard my hand. So, yeah, okay. Again, yeah, yeah, your timing has to be good on this, whether or not that's something you, you know, might want to do it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't read it, did I, when I played it last turn, but yeah, so something to consider. Well, that is castable with the mana I've got. So maybe what I should do is empty my hand a little bit. Six. to get to surveil no I don't want to do that Play out that, play the Swamp out, now I should, yeah, if I cast, I've got enough mana so I could cast the Chaos Warp and the, this, and then that would, yeah, so, okay, so again it depends on whether, yeah, so the timing on this is everything, so do you want it as a 6-6 six, six out? And not discarding your stuff, or do you want it out discarding your stuff and then getting your? So this is why this is so difficult to do if you're gold fishing, because you, you know you there's no real scenario on the other side of the board. So yeah, so that's the consideration really. It's not even hmm. interesting. Which um, okay. okay. So we look at another hand. That's handy. I can vandal blast fairly early on if someone gets a soul ring out. Okay, two in a black, Bob Witch. Make us the wheel. Okay. 
So I could... Yeah, so at this point I could sack this and just restock my hand if I felt so inclined. Just out of curiosity, let's just see what happens if I was to do that. So if I sack that, let's go on my hand. Seven, okay. Yeah. Okay, so lots of castable stuff here. So yeah, everything here is castable. Okay, so let's see how we go on. Five, six, seven. So it looks like we're a bit starved for mana here until we get to this point. Okay, and then we're good. Okay, well that was interesting to see. Like I said, there's not much you can really determine from that simply because so much of the deck depends on what's going on on the other side of the board and you can't really, you just don't see that when you're doing those sort of uh, play testing when you're gold fishing. But an interesting deck to play around with. But again, I suspect. Yeah. With these, you know, some of these cards are on the expensive side. So it's not, it's very difficult if you're trying to build these decks in paper with a view to just playing around with it. Um, like building the toolkit. Because it could turn out to be, I don't, know, I don't know how much fun it is to actually play this style of playing. For me, obviously, you know, building these decks is dependent on the the cards that end up getting randomly selected when I do the virtual booster pack. So, you know, it's more from that perspective. Um, so I have no choice. <laughs> yeah, and it's more just to see where, where it goes and what we get suggested and maybe learn something new about a particular style of deck that I would never even consider doing um, and seeing what card combinations come up. So I think I'll stop it there. Thanks once again for watching. As I said, next week we're going to see the triumphant return of set musings and have a look at some older supplemental sets. And as I said, you know, if there's anything, any supplemental set in paper that you'd like me to cover in that series, then please let me know in the comments section both now and going forward and uh, I'll uh, obviously try and uh, accommodate you alongside any ones that I'm really <laughs> determined to get out. So thanks once again for watching, bye for now and I will catch you in a future video.